Hey, so I'm just going to walk you through setting up this kind of conveyor belt system. It's actually, it's a weird process, but it's kind of straightforward once you kind of understand what's going on with it. And uh, I'll show you how to kind of increase the complexity a little bit as well. So let me go back to uh, the beginning here just to, what have I done? Oh, okay. Um, just to get rid of these bits. Um, so I'm assuming that you have something, something like this, right? So we have a Bezier curve and I'm just resampling that curve. So just resampled to a number of points and then instancing on our slat object, or in this case, I'm just using a cube that is, you know, scaled and I'm aligning it to be aligned to the curve tangent. Uh, I'm also only rotating around the x-axis just because sometimes when you go past, I don't know if it'll do it here, that seems all right here actually. Um, yeah, you can see as that moves at all, we're getting some weird tumbling going on. So sometimes just locking that to an axis is just gonna make it a little bit more predictable. So for us to get this to move along the curve, what we're actually gonna do is not move it along a curve. Um, so we're not taking one object and moving it along a curve. What we're doing is we're showing and hiding a different object along that curve. Um, so if we think about motion and computers, we have a certain frame rate. And uh, so if I was to hide everything except from this one, and then the next frame, I was to hide everything except from this one, and then the next frame and the next frame and the next frame, what you would think was happening was not that I was just turning one off and on, you would think that it was moving in this direction. So that's essentially the hack that we're gonna do here. It just lets us move stuff around infinitely with a relative ease. So I've got my curve here and what we can do is we can just use the selection here to make a selection. We're gonna be doing the selection based on index and we want to select, let's say one in every 10. So let's take our index and to do one in every of something, we can essentially do a modulo operation. Modulo uh, is just, so officially it returns the remainder after a division. However, in, and as we use it, the most important thing to think of it as, like to me, it, it just repeats gradients. So if I have the index, which right now goes from zero to 31, or zero to 30 actually inclusive, so if I have zero to 30 and I want this to repeat zero to 10, zero to 10, zero to 10, I can just do index modulo by 10. So that's how I think about it. It's just repeating gradients. Take this on here, set this to modulo, set this to 10. And we want a Boolean of this. So I'm going to find when the modulo equals a specific value. And that's going to give us one of the zero to 10, right? So let's go compare looking for where this float is, uh, is equal. We can change this to integer because we are actually only dealing with integers here. Plug this into our selection and there we go. So now what we have is uh, zero and then we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we're getting zero. And then we're missing one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and then we're getting zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, zero, and so on. If I increase this to a uh, higher count, then it's gonna have the effect of packing these in a bit more and our step size is going to be smaller. So remember for each of these, if I set this to 400, for each one of these, we're only actually seeing one in 10 of the positions that are available. And what we can do then is just add something to the index. So let's add a math node in here. And you can see as I move this, it's having the effect of just offsetting. So we're just displaying one in 10. And then as we add, it's showing the next and the next and the next and the next because we have this repeating. So every 10 is exactly the same. We get this kind of continuous effect. We can plug this into the frame and then you can press play and have an animation. All right, so what happens if you want to have a collection rather than a single cube object? That's kind of how we can scale this a bit better. It's also going to allow us to work into stuff like random rotations and random scales. 
Uh, so that's what I've done is I've set up another collection just with some slats, some different slats, and you can see there one is pinched in the middle, one is a little bit raised. Maybe I make that a little bit more raised just to be obvious. And the other one is just straight. So let's go back to our conveyor belt. Let's drag in our slats collection. Go to that cube. We want to instance these. Obviously we want to pick an instance per thing. We want to separate and reset those children. And uh, that's looking correct. So what happens if we press play now? Well, we get a lot of weird flickering. And the reason for this is this is not moving one step to one step. We're just showing one step out of every 10. So our slats are assigned one to every point. And each time we show the next point, we're getting a different slat. That's why we're getting this weird flickering effect. However, because of this instance index here, we can actually pick which instance goes on which point. And all we actually need to do there is just use this offset. So this index plus the frames can become this. And then we're offsetting which index happens on which position at the same speed that we're hiding and showing different ones. Uh, you can use the same trick to randomize something like scale. So let's do a random value in here. I'm going to set this to float between point heat, I guess, and one. And again, if I just press play, each point of the 400 that we have available is assigned a random value. And this value is based on this ID. So if we move the ID, then it all, because, because everything's moving at the same speed at the same time with the same, the same everything, we're getting a nice, uh, we're getting a nice loop on there. If you want this to be looping infinitely with your um, with your animation, let's have a look how many frames we've got here. Timeline, so I've got 250 frames. Um, let me just, that's just a, an empty keyframe there. In fact, let me go down to 200. Uh, my end frame there, so one to 200. So now what we can do is we need to make sure that we have 200 steps in our animation. And to do this, I'm just going to use an integer here. So on our resample curve, I'm going to set this to 200. It's the number of frames we've got. You can see it's a little bit more spaced out. And so it's going to be a little bit faster. Uh, I might actually just make this a bit smaller just to make up for it. There we go. Same difference, right? But we're uh, We're just showing things, however. Let me just set this up how I like it. Okay, that looks a bit nicer. Okay, so now we have exactly 200 steps, which is great, but there we go. We get a little pop when it goes back to zero. So what we also need to make sure is that we have, okay, at frame zero, we have index zero, to 199 and then at frame 200 because we're adding this on here let me just fix my annotations let's lock that um yeah so at frame 200 we're adding 200 to this so then we'll have 200 to 399 and this is where this is where we get a bit of an issue um so instead of it going 0 to 199 um and then adding each time. What we want to do is just as we modulated this at 10 so that we would have that gap, we're going to modulate our whole index control by 200. And what this is going to mean is that we're going to get 0 to 199. And then at frame 1, we're going to get 1 to frame uh, 200, but we're then modulating at 200. So we'll actually get 1 to 199, and then we'll get 0. And then at frame three or let's say 15, we'll get frame um, 15 to 184. Sorry, that's not right. <laughs> to again to 199. And then after that, we'll get 
0 to 14. So what's basically happening is it's going to loop back on itself. So we can just take another modulo, plug this in like this, and now every time, and but every, every frame, there is only ever the value 0 to 199 coming through this modulo, which means all of our instance indexes are going to always be correct, start and finish, they're going to be consistent, and all of our random value IDs, they're going to be consistent. We're not going to have any weirdness at any point. So if I now play this, as we get past 200, you don't see a pop because we're telling it to loop correctly. And there you have it. That's how you can loop stuff along a spline infinitely. Uh, yeah, relatively easy. This seed still works, but uh, obviously it's that idea is the important bit there. There you have it. Hope this helps.